Okay, and we're live. Um, welcome back to the Big AI Hackathon's uh, speaker series. Um, this hackathon is co-hosted by Big Commerce and Google. So we're really excited to have you guys back for another great session. Um, this one's gonna be about building big commerce apps and app extensions. Uh, we're joined by Matt Volk, a Big Commerce Software Engineer One, and Georgia Hoff, a Big Commerce Product Designer. And if you're watching live and you have any questions, throw them in the chat and we'll be sure to get to them. And then if you're also watching this Alternately, if you're watching this asynchronously, um, feel free to drop any questions into Dev Slack and we'll get them answered for you later on today. Um, so I'll let you take it away, Matt. Awesome. Thank you, Katie. Excited to present a little bit about apps and a relatively new release that we have called App Extensions. So I think a lot of us are familiar with third party apps on BigCommerce. Um, I won't dive too much into that, but I did want to touch a little bit on app extensions and the problem that we set out to solve with them. So app extensions at a high level are basically a new way for third-party app developers to more tightly integrate their solutions within the BigCommerce control panel. So traditionally, uh, applications on a BigCommerce store were managed in a completely different area in the control panel, specifically under the app section. So over time, we started to understand that a lot of merchants have to do a lot of context switching between the work that they do in an app and the work they do throughout the rest of the control panel. If we take an example, maybe adding a new product to your store, um, a merchant might want to, or they might have a requirement that every time they add a new product, they need to associate some product meta fields with that product, which traditionally can only be done via API, uh, though there are apps out there that set out to give you sort of a UI to add meta fields to products. And so in the old way before app extensions, a merchant would add their product in their uh, product section of their control panel, and they'd have to switch over to their app section, open their product meta field app, and then go ahead and add those meta fields to that product. Uh, that context switch can be somewhat cumbersome um, and time consuming. And so what app extensions allow you to do is if the product meta field app developer added the ability for that app to install an app extension on the product section of the control panel, for example. While that merchant is adding a new product, they could simply click a little button that renders an app extension and add their meta fields in a little UI uh, that renders basically just your app. So as a quick little demo, I have a recording of an app that I quickly created and used to install an app extension. Uh, the functionality of the app extension is very bare bones. This app is mainly just for demo purposes. It's got some screenshots of some code. Um, so I'll go ahead and start playing through that. This is just a test store that I'm logging into. It is a brand new store, so nothing's been done on it so far. All the products that you're going to see are just what comes out of the box of BigCommerce. It's worth noting this little action dropdown is also unmodified. These are just the default actions you can perform on a product in the view products listing page. And what I'm going to do next is navigate over to the apps dashboard. This is the distinction between the apps dashboard and the products dashboard that I mentioned before. Quick pause to call out um, as you're developing your app for the, for the hackathon. Uh, I won't dive into the dev tool section where you register an app, <clears throat> but it's worth noting that once you register an app in the dev tool center, that app won't be available within the regular My Apps marketplace until you submit it and it gets approved by our app store team. Uh, so in development where you'll access that app is within the My Draft app section. Uh, the only way that this tab will show the app you've registered is if you're the owner of the store that you're developing on. So the user I'm logged in into on this test store is the owner of this store. And here I am just installing the app. You'll notice on this scope confirmation page, I've applied the view and modify app extension scope to the app I created in the DevTools Center. Go ahead and confirm. Behind the scenes, Big Commerce is hitting my app's install callback. And you'll notice I'm highlighting the existing app extensions block of code right here. So this is actually a live block of code that is pulling from the get all app extensions GraphQL query. You can see that even though my app was installed, it doesn't by default install any app extensions. I know that we have some examples and open source reference implementations of single click apps that do install um, app extensions on installation, but I thought it'd be cool to show a use case where 
and app extensions only installed on a store when the merchant wants it to be. So this is just me demoing. I'm gonna go back to the products page here and show you that there is not yet any app extensions installed, just like that block of code showed us. And as a merchant, now that I'm sort of ready to create my new app extension, I'll go through and make sure the code, the GraphQL mutation that I'm gonna send over is what I want. It's worth noting that URL that I highlighted is very specific and a requirement to render an app extension and tell that app extension which page in your app to open. So I'll kind of show some code in a second here. Um, but this is basically just a relative path relative to my app's origin. So if my app is living on app dot, you know, coolcompany.com, when this app extension is open on a page, BigCommerce will tell app.coolcompany.com to open as app.coolcompany.com slash extensions slash products slash this notation to dynamically inject, inject an ID uh, that is equal to the ID of the product I, app, I open the app extension for. So I'll kind of explain how that works in a second here. I'm going to show the code. I am using Next.js as a web development framework here. And Next.js has a path-based routing system. So the app is sort of the uh, entry point in the application. Sort of it would render at app.coolcompany.com. And then slash extensions would bring us into this folder. Slash products would bring us into here. And then Next.js has a concept of dynamic routing. So these brackets around this ID are basically a slot for um, the purposes of consuming dynamic uh, route path segments added to the application. So I'll kind of show you what that means in a second. Here is the markup for the app extension. This is what's going to render in the app extension side panel I create. This markup right here, those uh, components that I was just highlighting, these are imported from Big Design. Georgia will touch on that in a second. And now I'm clicking Create. I'm going to refresh my page, and you'll see the existing app extensions code block has changed a little bit. You'll notice that URL is the same URL that was sent in the mutation. And then I'm going to navigate back to my products dashboard. And now when I click that action drop down, you'll see the sample extension at the bottom. Sample extensions name also renders at the top of this UI panel. This is, as you recall, the name that I sent with the GraphQL mutation to create the app extension. Underneath that is the hello app extensions message that I provided uh, in that code example I showed a second ago. And then this product ID, this 111 right here is dynamic and I'll show you that in just a second. When this, I'll show you in a sec again, when I click the next app extension, it might make a little more sense. I'll close out of this one. So the second I click that sample extension button, the behind the scenes, Big Commerce is sending the load callback. It's sending a request to my load callback URL with the typical load callback payload. So that includes a JWT that you need to parse and verify using your app's client secret. And it also sends within the JWT a property for the URL. So within my app, in the load callback logic, I have basically a, 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 an if statement that says, if there is a URL passed in the load callback, add that URL to my app's origin to make it go from app.company.com to app.company.com slash extensions slash product. And then in that load callback in the JWT property for URL, the ID of this product that I'm opening the extension for is getting loaded in. So that bracket ID behind the scenes is actually getting replaced with 107. And I'm able to parse that out and show that within my app extension. And finally, because these app extensions are literally just hitting the load callback of your app, they are, in other words, rendering your app within this page of the control panel. So although I am getting the product ID from the load callback URL, theoretically, I can call or I can call back to my database from my application 
grab the store's access token and store hash and make API requests against the public BigCommerce REST API using this product ID to perform operations against that product ID. And I think that brings us to the end of the video. Um, that is basically a high level overview of what app extensions are. I did have some points I wanted to call out. I mentioned the thing about the load callback, but essentially app extensions are rendering your full app. So you have full abilities, basically anything you could do in your normal app within the app section, you can do within the UI section. And one other point to note is that in my app right now, if I were to go back and click this create button again to create yet another app extension, I'd be able to do that. There are limits to how many app extensions you can create based on the model, model being the different um, locations that an app extension can render. So I recommend, I think we'll post some links to the app extensions developer documentation to catch up on those. And I think that's about it. I will, uh, I think I'll pass it over to Georgia. I'm not sure if I stopped sharing my screen or if Katie, you've got that on your side. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah, that was really cool, Matt. Thanks for that demo and everything. Hi, everyone. Um, like Katie mentioned, my name is Georgia Hoff. I am a product designer here at BigCommerce. And Matt touched on a lot of how the app extension works um, and how it looks in our control panel and more of that sort of developer facing um, experience. And I wanna discuss a little bit more about the look and feel of some of what Matt showed. So predominantly sort of in that drop down menu and then that um, right hand sort of drawer that came out, like what does that look like um, and what can that look like? So generally at Big Commerce, we use um, our big design library, which is our design system. And that's a library of React components um, that allows developers to build apps that have a native Big Commerce look and feel. Um, so all the big commerce developers and designers like myself use big design every day um, for our control panel. And that's uh, really any apps that we're building as well. Um, we would be using big design, any native apps. And then also we encourage any third party developers um, like yourselves in the hackathon. I'm sure some of you are familiar with big design already, um, but really encourage you guys to use big design as you're building these apps and app extensions. So I wanna talk a little bit about some of the benefits of using, um, using Big Design. And I'm just gonna run through a few points here and then I'll touch a little bit on when Big Design might not make sense for you and then share some resources um, to kind of get started with Big Design if you're not already. So um, why should you consider using Big Design um, and what are some of the benefits? So I think one of the, the first is the most obvious, but uh, the most important probably, um, and that's just for a consistent user experience. So in Matt's demo, you could see on that right-hand drawer as it kind of popped out, um, we really wanna be maintaining a consistent UI with the control panel. Um, so instead of the user sort of work focusing on, uh, you know, figuring out what new UI patterns they need to figure out as that, um, app extension is something that they're using, really wanting them to be focused on that workflow rather than trying to figure out like a new design pattern. Um, so for that consistency, really recommending that big design is the best way to do that. Um, and then also streamlining the process of development. So at Big Commerce, we have a lot of starter apps and resources to help you kickstart your development. And um, a lot of those starter apps already have big design um, sort of, you know, baked into it. So uh, really, you know, using our starter apps to the full capacity and being able to um, kind of already have that knowledge of big design and build off of what that foundation is that we've created for you. Um, another reason would be fitting in with our ecosystem. So we have, you know, a lot of apps in our app marketplace that are using big design. Um, we also have our native apps that are using big design. So really feeling like um, your app or your app extension is kind of a part of the ecosystem, whether that's public facing or if it's just private in a, a merchant's control panel. I'm feeling like it really is matching our ecosystem is something that we're really focused on. Um, another small kind of part of it with which kind of uh, kind of goes into that other point of our ecosystem is the approval process. We do have an approval process for public facing applications. Um, so not just really prioritizing that native feeling, but also feeling like you could streamline your app approval process by using big design. 
And then last but definitely not least is just connecting with our big commerce developers. So we have had developers in the past from our community contribute to big design. Um, and a lot of the uh, big, big commerce developers today um, that are using big design are people that had a hand in actually creating that big design system from the, the ground up. So really being able to engage with the developers internally, but also other people in our development community that might be using big design, um, a really great opportunity to just connect with other developers and also designers, of course. So some of the potential limitations or some of the reasons that big design might not make sense for you. Um, some of the reasons that I came up with, one would be if you have a really complicated use case, so maybe you already have a design system that you're using um, that accommodates your specific use case, it might not be worth using big design. So really kind of judging um, the cost benefit of using big design in that case for your specific use case. Um, and then another limit, potential limitation could be that um, if you're not using React components or if you're not using React um, big design components are React components, like I said earlier. So if you're using another framework, big design is not going to work with that. I think there's a few workarounds um, with Ruby on Rails and things like that. But I think for the technicalities of that, I would pass it over to Matt um, if people have questions. Um, and then that about sums up kind of all the points I wanted to touch on with big design. And Katie has put some of the resources that I wanted to share in the description of this, um, this YouTube video. And just to run through what those, um, those resources are, the first one is our big design guidelines. So that'll have code examples in it as well. So you can play around with those components um, before you kind of get touching it, them in the GitHub repo. And then also I've attached our uh, big design components documentation, like how to install big design components. And it really walks you through um, all those different steps. And then also has some other great details about just kind of like generally the usability and all that. Um, and then the third one is our Figma UI kit for big design. I know that there are some designers in this hackathon, which is really awesome. So we do have a, a Figma kit for that. And you can um, add that to your Figma and start messing around with those components um, in your own Figma file. So um, make sure that you're using that, especially if you're a designer. And that's it for me. So we're really excited to see what you create. And I think I'll pass it back to Katie for any questions from the community. Awesome. Thank you so much, Georgia. Um, and thank you to Matt as well. This was such a great session. Um, app extensions, implementation, and design of the apps you submit are two major things that we're looking at when we're judging this hackathon. And so this is super useful information. Um, for all of you hackers to really focus on uh, the usability and the user experience of whatever it is that you build. So huge thank you to Matt and Georgia. Um, if you're watching this and you have questions and you aren't watching live, feel free to drop those questions into Dev Slack in the Hackathon channel, um, and we'll get those answered later. Um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining, and we'll see you guys in the next session. See ya.